What's up my fellow e-skaters of YouTube? Today, we're gonna tear down an Outrunner brushless motor. I'm gonna go over how to take it apart, the components of it, and you do what you want with the information. I'm not gonna get into deep specifics how they work. I'm gonna save that for another video, how these work, because I can actually take hub motor and Outrunner motor and combine them into one and actually show you the concept of how it works. This motor happens to be uh, the first generation race star motor when they were black and they just had the information printed on it. But I do happen to have an Evolve motor which is plain with no writing. I actually have a couple of them here. It doesn't matter which one you have, they're the exact same match. I was actually just in a group on Evolve and somebody uh, had a question about, you know, the Race Star Motors. I guess they ordered them and when they lined it up, it didn't look like it would line up. They're asking what are people doing about the gear and all that. Uh, it looks like it'll mess up. But believe me, it's an exact retrofit to the Evolve GT. Whether you have the bamboo or you have the carbon fiber, doesn't matter. It's gonna be an exact fit. They weigh the same, all the dimensions are the same, everything's the same. As far as the quality goes, I can't say it's the same exact quality. The best luck I've had so far, I can tell you, is from the 200 kV Race Star Motors, the newest ones, the newest batch. That's all I can say, that's the best luck I've had. If it was any different, I would tell you it's different. Let's start with a complete motor. And what we'll notice once we get it off the board, you have your wires coming from it, you have your shaft, and if you understand how the motors work, this part gets mounted, this is stationary. This part turns along with the shaft, which turns the gear. This always stays stationary, and this turns. This whole unit, just like this. All this turns. That's the shaft there, that's how it's connected, and holds that gear and turns, like this. All right, this is your phase wiring, that's your three wires where you're going to have electricity coming in from your ESC or VESC or whatever you're using. And this is your hall sensor wires here. You're going to have a negative, a positive, and then the negative black, the positive red on the end, and in the middle your yellow, white, and your blue. They're for the three hall centers or the pickups inside of the motor. You want to get that gear off. It's not always easy to get off, especially if you have a stock Evolve motor. Now, I don't have any with the gear on it today. I've taken all my gears off, but I can tell you, one and a half millimeter wrench, and you're going to have to heat it up. Once you heat up that gear, this motor is going to be rendered useless. So don't take that gear off unless you're completely done with this motor. You're going to have to heat that gear up. I used a uh, propane torch, gave it a nice little heating. The set screw come out real easy once I heated it up. Body panel puller or screwdriver, whatever you want, put it underneath and pop it off. It's still going to have to be warm or hot in order to pop that gear off. There's a little bit of adhesive or something that's used in there. That melts, that expands. Why it's warm? pop it off. Gears off and we have just the motor. So you're thinking, well, where can I begin? How can I get into this? How can I open it up? You could do it two ways. You can go from either end. You can go from this end or you can go from that end. If you go from this end, you're going to have to take off that retaining clip that you see on the inside there. And then from there, you're going to have to take that bearing which is pressed on there in place and you're going to have to get it off the shaft. It's not going to be easy. So I'm telling you, you can get in it from this way. It is not the easy way, the very, very easy way to start on the other end. There's gonna be three set screws on the end of that shaft. Go ahead and take all three of those set screws off. Let's assume you wanna be careful and you wanna uh, crack this open and you don't wanna damage anything. Now, I could tell you, you can use a screwdriver, be super careful. You're gonna have wires in here, you're not gonna wanna hit, you're not gonna wanna mess up. If you put your screwdriver in just a tiny bit and actually turn it like this to create the gap, do it on one side, go on the other side, and you can also lightly tap this end here too, that shaft. Hold the screwdriver like this. I wouldn't go putting this in a vise. I wouldn't want to 
mess up this outer covering. That's just me personally. Just like that, tap it out. Now if you look at the back side of that shaft there, you'll see the recessed spot. Make sure those set screws are backed out enough or you'll never get this shaft out of there. On the bottom there is that brass sleeve. That goes on the inside here. That's what this travels on. Don't lose that. Pull it apart, there it is. Just be very careful of that. You're gonna need that when you put your motor back together. See, there's that re retaining clip there. And then underneath it's a washer. And then sits that bearing. Here's the inside motor with the wires cut. This is the hall sensor unit. You can see there's three sensors, evenly spaced out. I don't see a temperature sensor on this motor. I believe that uh, there is no protection against heat in the actual motor itself. There's not much to these motors, uh, any reason to actually take it apart. I can't come up with any good ones. You don't really have to take these apart to maintain them or to clean them. My suggestion would be if you're gonna clean it, or maintain it get electrical parts cleaner use the holes back here that'll be your best friend you're gonna want to wash it out with it draining down now I know ideally it would be better to take everything apart these aren't really meant to be taken apart in maintenance though would I do it to maintenance it no I don't go taking my motors apart to maintenance them the only reason why I ever took any of these motors apart was just to see how they work and basically that's what I'm showing you here. I'm just showing you the, the engineering behind it and how it works. Do I recommend you do this to any motor that you're gonna be keep using? No, not at all. I know a lot of people have asked me about changing the bearings in the motor and it sounds like a great idea. Like if you maintenance the motor and then keep the bearing nice and fresh, you'll have a lot of use out of it. But actually if you just keep the motor clean, you're gonna be good to go. The odds of this bearing failing on you is gonna be slim to none. I know some of the motor failures appear that the bearing actually failed and that's why the motor failed, but the odds are that's not what happened. It's probably got dirty and uh, it's gonna be off a little bit in its travel when it spins and that's what caused the failure. I know I've had motors fail and the wire sticking out of it. You know, I, wh whatever happened on the inside, it had nothing to do with the bearing. So the idea of actually replacing the bearings in these motors, it, it's not a good idea. Don't do it. I would say don't do it. It's my opinion. The, the odds of you disassembling the entire motor uh, or even disassembling it just to get the bearing out and replace it and put everything back together and not mess anything up, the odds aren't really that great. Teach their own, teach their own no, you know? I'm just trying to provide the best information I can as far as breakdown and engineering and structure behind it. And you do what you want with it. I hope this video, the Outrunner Motor Breakdown, helps somebody at least long age question about whether or not to replace the bearings in the outrunner motor or how to replace the bearings in the outrunner motor i can't exactly answer that question i don't want to answer it because my opinion is don't touch it i know uh real quick i wanted to touch base on motor failure and it getting hot melting if we look at the inside of this motor here i don't know what this blue crap is that was used but you could see it did get hot and drip down into the bottom. Oh, you guys can catch that, see it there? Where that blue stuff on the edge dripped down. When this motor came apart, it was pretty fresh uh, destruction. When I pull, and this isn't a valve motor here. When I pulled this apart, that stuff was like gooey and you could tell it had a lot to do with the motor failure now it's rock solid. It, it just doesn't even look right. Something doesn't look right about how it's just all over in different spots. It's not even uniform. 
So something wasn't right with this motor from the get-go. There ain't no freaking way. And what I could tell you is I have had a motor failure where this top cap had been broken off from that inner magnetic piece and it just rendered the motor useless. You couldn't even turn it after that. Like, and it was like that when I took it apart. It only looks like it's cast metal. Some cheap pot metal that can break easily. You know, if, if you have enough vibration or impact, I suppose, it can break it. I, I don't know. I really don't know how those motors break so easy. It's just low quality, guys. Just my opinion. In the Evolve group, somebody was asking about the inner bearings of the motor. They asked if I've ever taken them out. And they're curious. Seeing as I already have a motor apart, I figured, you know what? Let me go ahead and take these bearings out and let me see what it's all about. We're going to answer some of these questions here. Now, the first thing we'll notice, well, here's what this normally looks like. This part's broken off, so all we have is the magnet. The bearings are in the inside here. I pop this part off, okay? This is your hall center unit, and on the inside, there's a sleeve, and then there's two bearings that sit on top of that sleeve. One, two. They're sandwiched between the sleeve and this hall sensor unit, like just like this. You take a look in there, you could see that sleeve, which I'm assuming is pressed in there and it's not going to be going anywhere. Bearings sit on top of that like so and then this cap hall sensor unit cap sits on top just like that but there's two of these when I tell you guys I don't recommend changing the bearings in this motor maybe you could possibly see why I say that now a uh, new race star motor is gonna cost you we'll say tops fifty dollars for one motor tops fifty dollars a new Evolve motor is going to cost you $200. Even if they gave you the discount, I've heard of people getting some generous discounts from Evolve of $20 off, which is awesome. That's 10%. It's still going to cost you $180. And I get the idea you don't want to spend $180 on a motor. Evolve obviously doesn't want to sell those motors to its customers. That's why the price is jacked all the way up. You don't have to use Evolve motors. If they don't want to sell them to you, don't buy them. Buy the Race Star motors. I mean, I know they have them for sale, but if they wanted to sell them, they would have them listed on the web page. Here, you can buy these motors, they're for sale. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on these motors. I know my fair share just from tinkering around with them. You're getting to see what I get to see. Of course, I make assumptions as well as you're going to make assumptions. But if you have any questions, I can try to answer them the best I can. I try to stick towards not how to do this, but this is how it's done or this is what it looks like, just because I know I'm not an expert. All right, guys. Take it or leave it. Joe Kaiser. Over and out.